England, 1529. King Henry VIII is on the English throne. Cardinal Wolsey is Lord Chancellor, the most prestigious office in the land. Sir Thomas More is Speaker of the House of Commons, one of the most intelligent and influential men in England, and, moreover, the King's friend. A man for all seasons. It is perverse to start a play made up of kings and cardinals in speaking costumes and intellectuals with embroidered mouths with me. If a king or a cardinal had done the prologue, he'd have had the right materials. And an intellectual would have shown enough majestic meanings, coloured propositions, and closely woven liturgical stuff to dress the House of Lords. Well, I'll give you a proposition of my own. Now, uh, where's my steward's costume? There's company to dinner. Duke of Norfolk and Master Richard Rich. Ah, here we are. Matthew, the household steward of Sir Thomas More. A common man. A 16th century butler. The 16th century is the century of the common man. Like all the other centuries. And that's my proposition. The wine, please, Matthew. It's there, Sir Thomas. Is it good? Bless you, sir. I don't know. Bless you too, Matthew. Every man has his price. Master Richard Rich. But yes, in money, too. No, no, no. All pleasure, titles, women, bricks and mortar. There's always something. Childish. Well, in suffering, certainly. By a man with suffering. Impose suffering and offer him escape. Oh, for a moment I thought you were being profound. Good evening, Matthew. Evening, sir. No, not a bit profound. It, it then becomes a purely practical question of how to make him suffer sufficiently. Mm. Richard, you should go back to Cambridge. You're deteriorating. Well, I'm not used. Do you know how much I have to show for seven months' work? Work? Work. Waiting's work when you wait as I wait hard. For seven months, that's 200 days, I have to show the acquaintance of the Cardinal's outer dormant, the indifference of the Cardinal's inner dormant, and the Cardinal's Chamberlain's hand in my chest. <laughs> oh, and also one half of a good morning delivered at 50 paces by the Duke of Norfolk. Doubtless he mistook me for someone. He was very affable at dinner. Oh, everyone's affable here. Also, of course, the, the friendship of Sir Thomas More. Or, should I say, acquaintance? Say friendship. Well, there. A friend of Sir Thomas and still no office? There must be something wrong with him. I thought we said friendship. The Dean of St. Paul's offers you a post with a house, a servant, and 50 pounds a year. W what? What post? At the new school. A teacher. Well, a man should go where he won't be tempted. Look, Richard, see this goblet? Look. Look. It's beautiful. Italian. Do you want it? Why, no joke. Keep it. Sell it. Well, uh, uh, thank you, of course. Uh, thank you, but... It I... was sent to me a little while ago by some woman. Now she's put a lawsuit into the court of requests. It's a bribe, Richard. Oh. Huh. So you give it away, of course. Yes. Well, I'm not going to keep it. And you need it. But of course, if you feel it's um, contaminated... Uh, uh, no, 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 I'll risk it. <laughs> ah, why not be a teacher? You'd be a fine teacher, perhaps a great one. And if I was, who would know it? You, your pupils, your friends, God. Not a bad public that. Oh, and a quiet life. <laughs> you say that. Oh, Richard, I was commanded into office. It was inflicted on me. Can't you believe that? Hard. Be a teacher. I tell you, Alice, he scooped from the clouds. We'll settle this, my lord. We'll put it to Thomas. Thomas, no falcon could stoop from a cloud, could it? Well, I don't know, my dear. It sounds unlikely. There. Well, I've heard. Well, I've seen falcons do some very splendid things. But how could he stoop from a cloud? He couldn't see where he was going. You see, Alice, <laughs> you're ignorant of the subject. <laughs> a real falcon don't care where he's going. That's sure <laughs> It was the very first cast of the day. The sun was behind us. And from side to side of the valley, like the roof of a tent, was solid mist. Oh, mist! Well, mist is cloud, isn't it? No. The opinion of our subtle is that mists are an exhalation of the earth. He stood 500 feet. 
Like that. <laughs> like an act of God, isn't he, Thomas? He's tremendous. Tremendous. <laughs> what was that of Aristotle's, Richard? Uh, nothing, Sir Thomas. It's out of place. I've never found much use in Aristotle myself. Not practically. Great philosopher, of course. Wonderful mind. Exactly, Your Grace. Eh? Huh? Master Rich is newly converted to the doctrines of Machiavelli. Machiavelli. Oh, 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 the Italian nasty book, from what I hear. The doctrines of Machiavelli have been largely mistaken, I think. Indeed, uh, properly apprehended, he has no doctrine. Uh, Master Cromwell has the sense of it, I think, when he says... You know Cromwell? Uh, Slightly, Your Grace. The Cardinal's secretary? No. What? It's a fact. When, Howard? Two, three days. A fact, son? Well, the Cardinal's a butcher's son, isn't he? It'll be up quick and down quick with Master Cromwell. Yeah. Oh, letter for you, me. Sir Thomas. Oh, thank you, Matthew. Yeah. Talk of the Cardinal's secretary and the Cardinal appears. He wants me. Now. At this time of night? The oh. King's business. The Queen's business? More than likely, Alice. More than What's likely. What's the time? Eleven o'clock, sir. Is there a boat? Waiting, sir. Go to bed, my dear. Yes. You'll excuse me, Your Grace. Of course. Richard. Certainly. Now you go to bed. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Give us rest tonight. tonight. Or if we must be wakeful, cheerful. cheerful. Careful, careful only for our soul's salvation. salvation. For Christ's sake, amen. amen. And bless our Lord the King. And bless our Lord the King. Amen. 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 Goodbye, my dear. Take care, Thomas. Goodbye. How are you at Richmond? Oh, no, down the river. Then good night. Uh, Sir Thomas, I wondered if... Oh, Your Grace. Um, here's a young man desperate for employment. Something in the clerical line. Well, if you recommend him... No, I don't recommend him, but I point him out. He's at the new inn. You could take him there. All right. Come on. My lord. Sir Thomas, thank you. Be a teacher, Richard. Your Grace, it's half past one. Where have you been? One o'clock, Your Grace. I've been on the river. Since you seem so violently opposed to the Latin dispatch, I thought you'd like to look it over. Oh, thank you, Your Grace. Before it goes. Your Grace is very kind. Thank you. Well, what do you think of it? It seems very well phrased, Your Grace. <laughs> The devil it does. And apart from the style, Sir Thomas? I think the council should be told before that goes to Italy. Would you tell the council? Yes, I believe you would. You're a constant regret to me, Thomas. If you could just see facts flat on, without that moral squint, <laughs> with just a little common sense, you could have been a statesman. Oh, your grace flatters me. Don't frivol. The king. Yes. He's been to play in the muck again. Indeed. Thomas, the king wants a son. What are you going to do about it? I'm very sure the king needs no advice from me on what to do about it. Thomas, we're alone. I give you my word. There is no one here. I didn't suppose there was, Your Grace. Oh. Do you favor a change of dynasty, Sir Thomas? Do you think two Tudors is sufficient? Then the king needs a son. I repeat, what are you going to do about it? I pray for it daily. God's death, he means it. That thing out there is at least fertile, Thomas. But she's not his wife. No. Catherine's his wife, and she's as barren as a brick. Are you going to pray for a miracle? Ah, uh, uh, precedent. Yes. All right. Good. Pray. Pray by all means. But in addition to prayer, there is effort. My efforts to secure a divorce. Have I your support, or have I not? A dispensation was given so that the king might marry Queen Catherine for state reasons. Now we are to ask the Pope to dispense with his dispensation also for state reasons. I don't like plodding, Thomas. Don't make me plod longer than I have to. Well, then clearly all we have to do is approach His Holiness nicely. 
I think we might influence his holiness's answer. With this dispatch? With that and in other ways. I've already expressed my opinion on that. Then good night. Oh, your conscience is your own affair. But you're a statesman. Do you remember the Yorkish Wars? Very clearly. Let him die without an heir and we'll have them back again. Let him die without an heir, and this peace you think so much of will go out like that. Very well, then. England needs an heir. Certain measures, perhaps regrettable, perhaps not. There is much in the church that needs reformation, Thomas. All right. Regrettable, but necessary to get us an heir. Now explain how you, as Councillor of England, can obstruct those measures for the sake of your own private conscience. Well, I believe when statesmen forsake their own private conscience for the sake of their public duties, they lead their country by a short route to chaos. And we shall have my prayers to fall back on. You'd like that, wouldn't you? To govern the country by prayer? Yes, I should. I'd like to be there when you try. Yes. Who will deal with all this paper after me? You? Fisher, Suffolk. Fisher for me? Aye, but for the king. What about my secretary, Master Cromwell? Cromwell? You'd rather do it yourself? Me rather than Cromwell. Then come down to earth. And until then, allow for an enemy here. As your grace pleases. As God wills. Perhaps, your grace. More. You should have been a cleric. Like yourself, your grace. Ah, oh, Matthew. Allow me, Sir Thomas. Thank you. Is Lady Alice in bed? Yes, sir. Lady Margaret? No, sir. Master Roper's here. At this hour? Who let him in? He's a hard man to keep out, sir. Where are they? Uh, here, Father. Good morning, William. It's a little early for breakfast. I hadn't come for breakfast, sir. Will wants to marry me, Father. Well, he can't marry you. Sir Thomas, I'm to be called to the bar. Oh, congratulations, Roper. My family may not be at the palace, sir, but in the city they... Roper, have... the answer's no. And will be no, so long as you're a heretic. That's a word I don't like, Sir Thomas. It's not a likable word. It's not a likable thing. The church is heretical. Dr. Luther's proved that to my satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Luther's an excommunicate. From a heretic church. Church? It's a shop. Forgiveness by the floor and job lots now in Germany. Yes, and divorces. Divorces? Oh, half England's buzzing with that. Half England. The ends of court may be buzzing. England doesn't buzz so easily. Listen, Roper. Two years ago, you were a passionate churchman. Now you're a passionate Lutheran. We must just pray that when your head's finished turning, your face is to the front again. And don't lengthen your prayers with me, sir. No. One more or less. Is your horse here? No, I walk. Well, take a horse from the stables and get back home. Go along. May I come again? Yes, soon. Good night, sir. I'll see you around the stables. Is that final, Father? As long as he's a heretic, Meg, that's absolute. Nice boy. Terribly strong principles, though. Now it's somewhere here. Yeah. Uh, ah, yes. <clears throat> Whether we follow tradition in ascribing Wolsey's death to a broken heart, or accept Professor Larkham's less feeling diagnosis of pulmonary pneumonia, its effective cause was the king's displeasure. He died at Leicester on the 29th of November, 1530, while on his way to the Tower under charge of high treason. England's next Lord Chancellor was Sir Thomas More, a scholar and, by popular repute, a saint. His scholarship is supported by his writings. Saintliness is a quality less easy to establish, but from his willful indifference to realities which were obvious to quite ordinary contemporaries, it seems all too probable that he... Had it. Rich, what brings you to Hampton? I came with the Duke last night, Master Cromwell. They're hunting again. It's a kingly pastime, Master Rich. <laughs> I'm glad you found employment. You're the Duke's uh, secretary, are you not? 
Uh, my work is uh, mostly secretarial. Oh, is it his librarian you are, I bet? I do look after his grace's library, yes. Oh. Well, that's something. And I don't suppose you're bothered much by his grace in the library. <laughs> it's odd how differently men's fortunes flow. My late master died in disgrace, and here I am in the king's own service. There you are, in a comparative backwater. Yet the new Lord Chancellor is an old friend of yours. It... He isn't really my friend. Oh, I thought he was. In a sense, he is. Well, I always understood. He set you up in life. Master Cromwell, what is it that you do for the king? Yes, I should like to know that, Master Cromwell. Senior Chapuis, you've met His Excellency Rich, the Spanish ambassador, the Duke of Norfolk's librarian. Uh, but how should we introduce you, Master Cromwell? If we had the happiness... Oh, sly. Do you notice how sly he is, Rich? Well, I suppose you would call me the king's ear. It's a useful organ, the ear. But, in fact, it's even simpler than that. When the king wants something done, I do it. For example, Master Cromwell? <laughs> Beware these professional diplomats. <laughs> well, now, for example... Next week at Deptford, we are launching the Great Harry. A 1,000 tons, four masts, 66 guns, an overall length of 175 feet. It's expected to be very effective. All this you probably know. However, you may not know that the king himself will guide her down the river. Yes, yeah, the king himself will be her pilot. The king? He will have assistance, of course, but he himself will be her pilot. He will have a pilot's whistle upon which he will blow, and he will wear in every respect a common pilot's uniform, except for the material which will be cloth of gold. Uh, these innocent fancies require more preparation than you might suppose, and someone has to do it. Meanwhile, I do prepare myself for higher things. I stock my mind. Uh, Master Cromwell, don't we all? This ship, for instance... It has 56 guns, by the way, not 66, and only 40 of them heavy. After launching, I understand the king will take his barge to Chelsea. Yes. To uh, Sir Thomas Sir Thomas Moore's. Uh, will you be there? Oh, no. They'll talk about the divorce. The king will ask him for an answer. He has given his answer. The king will ask him for another. Sir Thomas is a good son of the church. Sir Thomas is a man. No sign of him, my lord. God, body, Alice, he must be found. He must be in the house. He's not in the house, mother. Then he must be here in the garden. He takes things too far, Alice. Do I not know it? It will end badly for I him. I know that too. My lady, Alice. Well, where well, is my father? father. Yes. No, sir. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. My lady, the king. Yes. Yes, fool. And if the king arrives and the chancellor is not here. Uh, my lady, it's not my fault. Lady Alice, Thomas will get no good of it. This is not how wolves he made himself great. Thomas has his own way of doing things, my lord. Yes, yes, Thomas is unique. But where is Thomas? Thomas! Oh, oh, my lord chancellor, what sort of fooling is this? Does the king visit you every day? No, but I go to Vesper's most days. He's here. But isn't this visit meant to be a surprise? For you, yes, not for him. Father, you propose to meet the king disguised in a cassock as a parish clerk? A parish clerk, my lord chancellor. You dishonor the king and his office. The service of God is not a dishonor to any office. Believe me, my friend, oh, I do oh, not feel the honor kill. his majesty oh, is doing. Oh, kill him. Him. Oh, him. Kill. Oh, him. Oh, him. Oh, him. Oh, him. Oh, him. Oh, him. Your majesty does my house more honor than I fear my household can bear. No ceremony, Thomas, no ceremony. <laughs> Passing fancy. I happen to be on the river. Look, <laughs> mud. <laughs> I fear we come upon you unexpectedly, Lady Alice. Oh, no, Your Grace. Uh, that is, yes. But we are ready for you. Uh, ready to entertain Your Grace, that is. <laughs> the river's given me an appetite. Oh, if Your Grace would share a very simple supper. It would please me very much. This is my daughter Margaret, sir. She has not had the honor to meet your grace. Why, Margaret. 
uh, told me you were a scholar. Answer, Margaret. Among women, I pass for one, Your Grace. I'm something of a scholar, too. Did you know? <laughs> All the world knows Your Grace's book, asserting the seven sacraments of the church. Ah, uh, yes. Between ourselves, your father had a hand in that. Hey, Thomas? Here and there, Your Grace, in a minor capacity. <laughs> he, he seeks to shame me with his modesty. Look, we'll follow Lady Alice. Thomas and I will follow. Yes, uh, okay. Wait. Margaret. Are you fond of music? Yes, Your Grace. Uh, blow this whistle. Oh, no, harder. <laughs> I brought them with me, Lady Alice. Take them in. Yes, your okay. Come, Meg. Listen to this, Thomas. Do you know it? No, your grace. Listen, I... listen, listen. listen. Be seated, Thomas. You are my friend, are you not? Your Majesty. And thank God I have a friend for my Chancellor. <laughs> Ready to be friends, I trust, than he was to be Chancellor. My own knowledge of my poor abilities. Now, I will judge of your abilities, Thomas. Did you know that Woolsey named you for Chancellor? Woolsey? I, before he died, Woolsey named you, and Woolsey was no fool. He was a statesman of incomparable ability, Your Grace. Was he? Was he so? Then why did he fail me? Uh, be seated. It was villainy, then. Yes. Villainy. I was right to break him. He was all pride, Thomas. A proud man. Pride right through. And he failed me. He failed me in the one thing that mattered. The one thing that matters, Thomas, then or now. And Why? He wanted to be Pope. Yes, <laughs> he wanted to be the Bishop of Rome. I'll tell you something, Thomas, and you can check this for yourself. It was never merry in England while we had cardinals amongst us. I'm touching this matter of my divorce, Thomas. Have you thought of it since we last talked? Of little else. Then you see your way clear to me? That you should put away Queen Catherine, sire. Oh, alas, as I think of it. I see so clearly that I cannot come with your grace, that my endeavour is not to think of it at all. Then you have not thought enough! Great God, Thomas, why do you hold out against me in the desire of my heart, the very wick of my heart? There is my right arm. Take your dagger and saw it from my shoulder, and I will laugh and be thankful if by that means I can come with your grace with a clear conscience. Ah, oh, I know it, Thomas, I know. Your Majesty... I crave pardon if I offend. Speak, then. When I took the great seal, your majesty promised not to pursue me on this matter. Ah, so now I break my word, Mr. Moore. No, no, I'm joking. I joke roughly. <laughs> I often think I'm a rough fellow, yes. <laughs> a rough young fellow. <laughs> Be seated. Uh, that's, uh, Magnolia. Ah, yes. ah. We have one like it at Hampton. Not so red as this, though. <laughs> I'm in an excellent frame of mind. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, beautiful. You must consider, Thomas, that I stand in peril of my soul. It was no marriage. She was my brother's widow. Leviticus, thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. Leviticus, chapter 18, verse yes, 16. Yes, your grace, but Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is ambiguous. Your grace, I am not fit to meddle in these matters. To me, it seems a matter for the Holy See. Thomas, Thomas, does a man need a pope to tell him when he sins? It was a sin, Thomas. I admit it. I repent. And God has punished me. I have no son. Son after son, she's borne me, Thomas, all dead at birth or dead within the month. I never saw the hand of God so clear in anything. I have a daughter. She's a good child, a well-set child. But I have no son. If your majesty it is could... my bounden duty to put away the queen, and all the Pope Spectres and Peter shall not come between me and my duty. How is it that you cannot see? 
Everyone else does. Then why does your grace need my poor support? Because you are honest. What's more to the purpose, you are known to be honest. There are those like Norfolk who follow me because I wear the crown. There are those like Master Cromwell who follow me because they are jackals with sharp teeth and I am their lion. And there is a mass that follows me because it follows anything that moves. And there is you. I am sick to think how much I must displease your grace. No, Thomas. I respect your sincerity. Respect? Oh, man, it's water in the desert. How did you like our music? That uh, air they played it had a certain... Well, tell me what you thought of it. Could it have been your grace's own? <laughs> <laughs> Discovered! <laughs> now, I'll never know your true opinion. And that's irksome, Thomas, for we artists, though we love praise, yet we love truth better. Then I will tell your grace truly what I thought of it. Speak. To me, it seemed delightful. <laughs> Thomas, I chose the right man for Chancellor. And I must, in fairness, add that my taste in music is reputedly deplorable. No, 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 no your taste in music is excellent. It exactly coincides with my own. <laughs> Touching this other business, Parky Thomas, I'll have no opposition. Your grace. No opposition, I say. No opposition. The conscience is your own affair, but you are my Chancellor. There you have my word. I'll leave you out of it. But I don't take it kindly, Thomas. And I will have no opposition. I am your grace's loyal minister. If I cannot serve your grace in this great matter of the queen... Queen! I have no queen! Catherine is not my wife. No priest can make her so. And they that say that she is my wife are not only liars, but traitors. Mind it, Thomas. Am I a babbler, Your Grace? You are stubborn. Mm. If you could come with me, you are the man I would soonest raise. Yes, with my own hand. Oh, Your Grace overwhelmed me. Eight o'clock, Your Grace. Oh. Um, lift yourself up, man. Have I not promised? Shall we eat? If your grace pleases. What will your grace sing for us? Eight o'clock, you said. Thomas, the tide will be changing. I was forgetting the tide. I'd better go. I'm sorry, your no, grace. I must catch the tide or I'll not get back to Richmond till the... No, don't come. Tell Norfolk. Oh, oh well, Lady grace, Alice, I'll I must go. It. I want to catch the tide. Oh. Though the truth, Lady Alice, I have forgotten. In your haven here, a time flows past outside. Affairs call me to court, and so I give him my thanks and say, uh, good night. Good night, Your Grace. Good night, Your Grace. What's this? You crossed him. Somewhat. Why? I couldn't find the other way. You're too nice altogether, Thomas. Woman, mind your house. I am minding my house. But, well, Alice, what would you want me to do? Be ruled. If you won't rule him, be ruled. I neither could nor would rule my king. But there's a little... little area where I must rule myself. It's very little. Less to him than a tennis court. Oh. Look, Alice, it was eight o'clock. and eight o'clock, Lady Anne likes to dance. Oh. I think so. And you stand between them. I... What stands between them is a sacrament of the church. I'm less important than you think, Alice. Thomas, Thomas, stay friends with him. Whatever can be done by smiling, you may rely on me to do. Oh, you don't know how to flatter. I flatter very well. My recipe is beginning to be widely copied. It's the basic syrup with just a soup son of discreet impudence. I wish he'd eaten here. Mm. We shall be living on that simple supper of yours for a fortnight. Alice. Alice. Set your mind at rest. 
Your husband is not the stuff of which martyrs are made. Sir Thomas. Oh, no. Will Roper, what you want? Will you, I told you not to. Oh, I'm not easily told, Maggie. I asked you not to. Sir, I wish to speak to you. My spirit is perturbed. Yes, it will. Why? I... I've been offered a seat in the next parliament. Oh, yes, will. Ought I to take it? No. Well, that depends. With your views on church reformation, I should have thought you could do yourself a lot of good in the next parliament. My views on the church, I must confess. Since we met, my views have somewhat modified. Uh -huh. I modify nothing concerning the body of the church. The money changers in the temple must be scourged from thence, with a scourge of fire, if that is needed. But an attack on the church itself? No. I see behind that an attack on God. Roper. The devil's work Roper. will be done by the devil's but ministers. For heaven's sake, would you remember my office? Ah. If you stand on your office... I don't stand on it, but there are certain things I may not hear. Sophistication. It's what I was told. The court has corrupted you, Sir Thomas. You're not the man you were. You have learned to study your convenience. You have learned to flatter. The Alice, you see, I have a reputation for it. God's body, young man. If I was the Chancellor, I'd have you whipped. Master Richard here, Sir Thomas. Oh, no. Good evening, sir. Richard? Good evening, Lady Alice. Good evening. Lady Margaret. Good evening, Master Richard. Do you know William Roper, the younger... By reputation, of course. Well, good evening, Martha. Rich. Oh. Oh. You have heard of me? Yes. In what connection? I, I, I don't know what you can have heard. I sense that I'm not welcome here. Why, Richard, have you done something that should make you not welcome? Why? Do you suspect me of it? I shall begin to. Cromwell is asking questions. He's continually collecting information about you. I know it. Stay a minute, Matthew. Uh, uh, yes, sir. He's one of his sources. Of course, he's one of my servants. Senior Chapuis, the Imperial Ambassador, collects information, too. That's one of his functions. You look at me as though I were an enemy. Why, Richard, you're shaking. I'm adrift. Help me. How? Employ me. No. Employ me. No. I would be steadfast. Richard, you couldn't answer for yourself, even so far as tonight. Good evening, Sir Thomas. Arrest him. Yes. For well, what? He's dangerous. He's a libel. He's a spy. He's arrest him. Oh, that man's bad. There is no law against that. There is God's law. Then God can arrest him. Oh, sophistication upon sophistication. No, sheer simplicity. The law, Roper, the law. I know what's legal, not what's right. And I'll stick to what's legal. Then you set man's law above God. No, far below. But let me draw your attention to a fact. I'm not God. The currents and eddies of right and wrong, which you find such plain sailing, I can't navigate. I'm no voyager. But in the thickets of the law... Oh, there. I'm a forester. I doubt if there's a man alive who could follow me there, thank God. While you talk, he's gone. And go, he should, if he was the devil himself, until he broke the law. So now you'd give the devil benefit of law. Yes. What would you do? Cut a great road through the law to get after the devil? I'd cut down every law in England to do that. Oh. And when the last law was down and the devil turned round on you, where would you hide, Roper, the laws all being flat? This country's planted thick with laws from coast to coast. Man's laws, not God's. And if you cut them down, and you're just the man to do it, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that would blow then? Yes, I'd give the devil benefit of law for my own safety's sake. I have long suspected this. This is the golden calf. The law's your god. Oh, Roper, you're a fool. God's my god. But I find him rather too subtle. I don't know where he is nor what he wants. Yes. It may be that I am a little intoxicated, Rich, but not with alcohol. With success. And who has a strong head for success? None of us gets enough of it, except kings, and they're born drunk. Success? What success? Yes. Collector of revenues for York? You do keep your ear to the ground, don't you, Rich? No, better than that. 
A high constable. Better than that. Better than high constable? Much better. Sir Thomas Paget is um, retiring. Secretary to the council? It is astonishing, isn't it? Uh, um, no. Most common, I mean, uh, one sees it. It's uh, logical. No ceremony, no courtship. Be seated. As his majesty would say. <laughs> yes. See how I trust you. Oh, I, I would never repeat or report a, a thing like that. What kind of thing would you repeat or report? Well, nothing said in friendship. Uh, may I say friendship? If you like. Uh, do you believe that, that you would never repeat or report anything, etc., etc.? Oh, yes. No, but seriously. Uh, yes. Rich. Seriously. It would depend on what I was offered. Everyone knows it. Not many people can say it. Well. Congratulations. On what? I think you'd make a good collector of revenues for York Diocese. What do I have to do for it? Nothing. It isn't like that, Rich. There are no rules. With rewards and penalties, so much wickedness purchases so much worldly prospering. Are you sure you're not religious? Almost sure. Get sure. No, it's not like that. It's much more a matter of um, convenience, administrative convenience. Uh, the normal aim of administration is to keep steady this factor of convenience, and Sir Thomas would agree. Now, normally, when a man wants to change his woman, you let him if it's convenient and prevent him if it's not. Now, normally, indeed, it's of so little importance that you leave it to the priests, but the constant factor is this element of convenience. Who's convenient? Oh, ours. But everybody's, too. However, in the present instance, the man who wants to change his woman is our sovereign lord, Harry, by the grace of God, the eighth of that name, which is a quaint way of saying that if he wants to change his woman, he will. So, that becomes the constant factor. And our job as administrators is to make it as convenient as we can. I say our job on the assumption you'll take this post at York I've offered you. Yes, yes, yes. It's a bad sign when people are depressed by their own good fortune. Oh, no, I'm not depressed. You look depressed. <laughs> I'm lamenting. I've lost my innocence. You lost that some time ago, if you've only just noticed. It can't have been very important to you. That's true. Oh, my, that's true, it can't. We experience a sense of relief, do we, Master Rich? An unfamiliar freshness in the head as of open air. Collector revenues isn't bad. Not bad for a start. Now, our present Lord Chancellor, there's an innocent man. The odd thing is, he is. Yes, I say, he is. Tell me, Rich, this goblet that he gave you, how much was it worth? Come along. Rich, he gave you a silver goblet. How much did you get for it? Fifty shillings. Could you take me to the shop? Yes. Where did he get it? It was a gift from a litigant. A woman, wasn't it? Yes. Which court? Chancery? Court of request. That, that wasn't too painful, was it? <laughs> no. That's all there is, and you'll find it easier next time. What application do they have, these tidbits of information you collect. None at all, usually. But sometimes... Well, there are these men, you know, upright, steadfast men who want themselves to be the constant factor in the situation, which, of course, they can't be. The situation rolls forward in any case. So what happens? If they have any sense, they get out of the way. What if they haven't any sense? What, none at all? Well, then they're only fit for heaven. But Sir Thomas has plenty of sense. He could be frightened. Don't forget he's an innocent, Master Cromwell. I think we'll finish there for tonight. After all, he is the Lord Chancellor. You wouldn't find him easy to frighten. You've mistaken your man this time. He doesn't know how to be frightened. Doesn't know how to be frightened? Why, then, he never put his hand in a candle, did he? Oh! You enjoyed that. You enjoyed it!
Two years have passed. It's now the middle of May, 1532. Well, during that time, a lot of water has flowed under the bridge. And among the things that have come floating along it is... is ah, here we are. The Church of England, that finest flower of our island genius for compromise. That system, peculiar to these shores, which deflects the torrents of religious passion down the canals of moderation. That's very well put. <laughs> Typically, this great effect was achieved not by bloodshed, but by simple act of Parliament. Only an unhappy few were found to set themselves against the current of their times, and in so doing to court disaster. For we are dealing with an age less fastidious than our own. Imprisonment without trial, and even examination under torture, were common practice then. Must you wear those clothes, Will? Yes, I must. Why? The time has come for decent men to declare their allegiance. Of what allegiance are those designs to express? My allegiance to the church. Well, you look like a Spaniard. All credit to Spain, then. You wouldn't last six months in Spain. You'd have been burned alive in Spain during your heretic period. I suppose you have the right to remind me of it. That chain of office that you wear is a degradation. I told you, if the bishops in convocation submitted this morning, I'll take it off. It's no degradation. Great men have worn this. When do you expect to hear from Canterbury? About now. The Archbishop promised me an immediate message. I don't see what difference convocation can make. The church is already a wing of the palace, is it not? The king is already its supreme head, is he not? No. You're denying the act of supremacy. No, I'm not. The act states that the king is supreme head of the church in England. Supreme head of the church in England, so far as the law of God allows. How far the law of God does allow it remains a matter of opinion, since the act doesn't state it. A legal quibble. Call it what you like. It's there, thank God. Very well. In your opinion, how far does the law of God allow this? I'll keep my opinion to myself, Will. Yes? Well, I'll tell you mine. Don't. It's... If your opinion's what I think it is, it's high treason, Roper. Will, you remember you've a wife now, and may have children. Why must you remember that? To keep myself discreet. Then I'd rather you forgot it. <laughs> you are either idiots or children. All saints, my lord. Our father, Signor Chapuis, has come to see you. Your Excellency. All saints, my lord. All saints. That's it, of course. Saints. Roper. Turn your head a bit. Hmm? Yes, I think I do detect a faint radiance. <laughs> you should have told us, Will. Oh. Come, come, my lord. You too at this time are not free from some suspicion of saintliness. I don't like the sound of that, Your Excellency. William, Margaret, the Imperial Ambassador is here on business. Would you mind? Oh, of course. What do you want? Rumour has it that if the church in convocation has submitted to the king, you will resign. I see. Supposing the rumour to be right, would you approve of that? Approve? Applaud? Admire? Uh, why? Because it would show one man, and that man known to be temperate, unable to go further with this wickedness. And that man known to be Chancellor of England, too? Believe me, my lord... Such a signal would be seen... Signal? Uh, yes, my lord. It would be seen and understood. By whom? By half your fellow countrymen. Really? Sir Thomas, I have just returned from Yorkshire and Northumberland, where I have made a tour. Have you, indeed? Things are very different there, my lord. There they are ready. For what? Resistance. Sir Thomas, excuse me, sir. His Grace, the Duke of Norfolk, it's all over, sir. They've decided to... One moment, Roper, I'll do this. Thomas. Oh. I was on the point of leaving, Your Grace. Uh, just a personal call. I have been trying uh, uh, to borrow a book, but without success. Uh, you're sure you have no copy, my lord? Uh, then I'll leave you. Uh, gentlemen, uh, ladies, goodbye, Eric. Sir Thomas. I'll do it, Roper. Convocation's knuckled under, Thomas. You have to pay a fine of a hundred thousand pounds. And, uh, we've severed the connection with Rome. The connection with Rome is nice. The connection with Rome. Did anyone resist? Uh, Bishop Fisher. Lovely man. Your Grace, this is quite certain, is it? Yes. Yeah. Funny company, Thomas. It's quite unintentional. He doesn't mean to be funny. Help me with this chain. Not I. 
Still eyes, sir. No, thank you, Will. Alice? Help, fire. God's blood and body, no! Son of a master more, you're taken for a wise man. Is this wisdom? To betray your ability, abandon practice, forget your station and, and, and your duty to your kin? And behave like a printed book? Margaret, will you? If you want. There's my clever girl. Well, Thomas, why? Make me understand. Because I'll tell you now, from where I stand, this looks like cowardice. All right, I will. This isn't reformation. This is war against the church. Our king, Norfolk, has declared war on the Pope because the Pope will not declare that our queen is not his wife. And is she? I'll answer that question for one person only, the king. I am that in private, too. Man, you're cautious. Yes, cautious. I'm not one of your hawks. Have I your word that what we say here is between us and has no existence beyond these walls? Very well. And if the king should command you to repeat what I have said? I should keep my word to you. Then what has become of your oath of obedience to the king? You lay traps for me. No. I show you the times. Why do you insult me with these lawyer's tricks? Because I am afraid. And here's your answer. The king accepts your resignation very sadly. He is mindful of your goodness and past loyalty, and in any matter concerning your honor and welfare, he will be your good lord. So much for your fear. You will convey my humble thanks to the king. I will. Good day, Alice. Goodbye, my lord. I'd rather deal with you than with your husband. So there's an end of you. What will you do now? Sit by the fire and make goslings in the ash? Not at all, Alice. I expect I'll write a bit. I write, I read, I think. I think I'll learn to fish. I'll play with my grandchildren when some rope has done his duty. Alice, shall I teach you to read? No, by God. Some rope, are you pleased with me, I hope? Sir, you've made a noble gesture. A gesture? Hmm. It wasn't possible to continue, Will. I was not able to continue. I would have if I could. I make no gesture. By God, I hope it's understood I make no gesture. Poor silly man. Do you think they'll leave you here to learn to fish? If we govern our tongues, they will. Look, I have a word to say about that. I have made no statement. I've resigned, that's all. On the king's supremacy, the king's divorce, which he'll now grant himself, the marriage he'll then make, have you heard me make a statement? No. And if I'm to lose my rank and fall to housekeeping, I want to know the reason. So make a statement now. No. Alice, it's a point of law. Thomas. Accept it from me, Alice, but in silence is my safety under the law. But my silence must be absolute. It must extend to you. In short, you don't trust us. Look, I'm the Lord Chief Justice. I'm Cromwell. I'm the King's Head Jailer. And I take your hand and I clamp it on the Bible, on the Blessed Cross. And <sighs> I say, woman... Has your husband made a statement on these matters? Now, on peril of your soul, remember, what's your answer? No. And so it must remain. No. Oh, it's only a lifeline. We shan't have to use it, but it's comforting to have. No, no. When they find I'm silent, they'll ask nothing better than to leave me silent. You'll see. But he makes no noise, Cromwell. He's silent. Why not leave him silent? Not being a man of letters, Your Grace, you perhaps don't realize the extent of his reputation. This silence of his is bellowing up and down Europe. But and I... Now, may I recapitulate? He reported the ambassador's conversation to you, informed on the ambassador's tour of the North Country, warned against a possible rebellion there. He did. Uh, we may say, then, that he showed himself hostile to the hopes of Spain. That's what I say. Bear with me, Your Grace. Now, if he opposes Spain, he supports us. And with a little pressure, he can be got to say so. And that's all we need, a brief declaration of his loyalty to the present administration. I still say let sleeping dogs lie. The king does not agree with you. What, what kind of pressure do you think you can bring to bear? I have evidence that Sir Thomas, during the period of his judicature, accepted bribes. What? 
God damn it, he was the only judge since Cato who didn't accept bribes. When was there last a Chancellor whose possessions after three years in office totaled 100 pounds and a gold chain? Sir Richard, it is, as you imply, a common practice, but a practice may be common and remain an offence. This offence could send a man to the tower. I don't believe it. Ah, uh, Richard, you know his grace, the Duke of Norfolk. Indeed, yes, we're, we're old friends. You used to look after my books or something, didn't you? Uh, come here. Uh, this woman's name is Catherine Anger. She comes from Lincoln, and she put a case in the Court of Requests in... A property case, it was. Be quiet. A property case in the Court of Requests in April 1526. And got a wicked false judgment. And got an impeccably correct judgment from our friend Sir Thomas. No, sir, it was not. We are not concerned with the judgment, but with the gift you gave the judge. Tell this gentleman about that. The judgment, for what it's worth, was the right one. No, sir. I sent him a cup, sir. An Italian silver cup I bought in Lincoln for a hundred shillings. Did Sir Thomas accept this cup? I sent it. He did accept it. We can corroborate that. You can go. Look. Go! Is that your witness? No. By an odd coincidence, this cup later came into the hands of Master Rich here. How? He gave it to me. Can you corroborate that? I have a fellow outside who can. He was more steward at that time. Shall I call him? Oh, don't bother. I know him. When did Thomas give you this thing, Rich? I don't exactly remember. Well, make an effort. My uh, wait. I can tell you. I can tell you it was that spring. It was that night we were there together. You had a cup with you when we left. Was that it? It may have been. Did he often give you cups? <laughs> I don't suppose so, Your Grace. Well, that was it, then. And it was April. The April of 26th, the very month that cow first put a case before him. In other words, the moment he knew it was a bribe, he got rid of it. The facts will bear that interpretation, I suppose. Oh, this is a horse that won't run, Master Secretary. Just a trial canter, Your Grace. We'll find something better. Look here, Cromwell. I, I want no part of this. You have no choice. What's that you say? The king particularly wishes you to be active in the matter. He's not told me that. Indeed. He told me. But why? We feel that since you are known to have been a friend of Moore's, your participation will show that there is nothing in the nature of a um, persecution but only the strict processes of law, as indeed you've just demonstrated. I'll tell the king of your loyalty to your friend. If you like, I'll tell him that you want no part of it, too. Are you threatening me, Cromwell? My dear Norfolk, this isn't Spain. Is this another personal visit, Shapweiss, or is it official? It falls between the two, Sir Thomas. Official, then? No. I have a personal letter for you. From whom? From King Charles. Uh, you will take it? I will not lay a finger on it. It is in no way an affair of state. It expresses my master's admiration for the stand which you and Bishop Fisher of Rochester have taken over the so-called divorce of Queen Catherine. I have taken no stand. But your views, Sir Thomas, are well known. My views are much guessed at. May I? Alice! Alice! Thomas? This is a letter from King Charles. I want you to see it's not been opened. I have declined it. You see, the seal has not been broken. I do, Thomas. I wish I could ask you to stay, Your Excellency. The bracken fire is a luxury. One I must forego. May I say I'm sure my master's admiration will not be diminished? I am gratified. Your Excellency. <laughs> luxury. Well, it's a luxury while it lasts. <laughs> There's not much sport in it for you, is there? Alice, the money from the bishops. I wish, oh heaven, how I wish I could take it, but I can't. I didn't think you would. Alice, there are reasons. 
We couldn't become so deep into your confidence as to know these reasons why a man in poverty can't take four thousand pounds. Alice, this isn't poverty. Do you know what we shall eat tonight? Yes, parsnips. Yes, parsnips and stinking mutton for a night's lady. But at the worst, we could be beggars and still keep company and be merry together. Merry? By merry. Oh, don't you see if I'm paid by the church for my writings? This had nothing to do with your writings. This was charity, pure and simple, collected from the clergy, high and low. It would appear as payment. You're not a man who deals in appearances. Oh, am I not, though? If the king takes this matter any further with me or with the church, it will be very bad if I even appear to have been in the pay of the church. Bad? If you will have it, dangerous. But you don't write against the king. I write. And that's enough in times like these. You said there was no danger. I don't think there is. And I don't want there to be. There's a gentleman here from Hampton Court. You're to go before Secretary Cromwell to answer certain charges. Charges? Well, that's all right. We expected that. When? Now. That means nothing, Alice. That's just technique. Well, I suppose now means now. I'm sorry to invite you here at such short notice, Sir Thomas. Good of you to come. Uh, will you take a seat? Thank you. I think you know Master Rich. Indeed, yes, we're old friends. That's a nice gown you have, Richard. Master Rich will make a record of our conversation. Good of you to tell me, Master Secretary. <laughs> Believe me, Sir Thomas. No, that's asking too much. But let me tell you all the same, you have no more sincere admirer than myself. No need to write yet, Rich. If I might hear the charges. Charges? I understand there are certain charges. Some ambiguities of behaviour I should like to clarify. Hardly charge it. Make a note of that, will you, Master Rich? There are no charges. <laughs> Sir Thomas, Sir Thomas. You know, it amazes me that you, who were once so effective in the world and are now so much retired from it, should be opposing yourself to the whole movement of the time. It amazes me, too. The king is not pleased with you. I am grieved. Yet, do you know that even now, if you could bring yourself to agree with the universities, the bishops, and the parliament of this realm, there is no honour which the king would be likely to deny you? I am well acquainted with his grace's generosity. Very well. Sir Thomas... <laughs> Rich. Uh, Sir Thomas, in the May of 1521... The king published a book, a theological work. It was called A Defense of the Seven Sacraments. Yes, for which he was named Defender of the Faith by His Holiness the Pope. By the Bishop of Rome, or do you insist on Pope? No, Bishop of Rome, if you like. It doesn't alter his authority. Thank you. You come to the point very readily. What is that authority? As regards the church in other parts of Europe, for example, the Church of England... What exactly is the Bishop of Rome's authority? You will find it very ably set out and defended, Master Secretary, in the King's book. The book published under the King's name would be more accurate. You wrote that book. I wrote no part of it. Yeah, I do not mean you actually held the pen. I merely answered, to the best of my ability, certain questions on canon law which His Majesty put to me, as I was bound to do. Do you deny that you instigated it? It was from first to last the King's own project. This is trivial, Master Cromwell. I should not think so if I were in your place. Only two people know the truth of the matter. Myself and the king. And whatever he may have said to you, he will not give evidence to support this accusation. Why not? Because evidence is given on oath and he will not perjure himself. If you don't know that, you don't yet know him. Sir Thomas More, is there anything you wish to say to me concerning the king's marriage with Queen Anne? I understood I was not to be asked that again. Evidently you understood wrongly. These charges are... Our terrors for children, Mr. Secretary, not for me. Then know that the king commands me to charge you in his name with great ingratitude and to tell you that there never was nor never could be so villainous a servant nor so traitorous a subject as yourself. So I am brought here at last. Brought? You brought yourself to where you stand now? Yes. Still in another sense. I was brought. So? Yes. You may go home now, for the present. Thank you, Master Cromwell. 
Richard. I don't like him so well as I did, Rich. There's a man who raises the gale and won't come out of harbour. Father, you know, sir, have you heard? We've been looking for you, Father. There should be a new act through Parliament, sir. Act? Yes, sir, about the marriage. Oh. Father, by this act, they're going to administer an oath. An oath? On what compulsion? It's expected to be treason. What is the oath? <laughs> it's about the marriage, sir. What is the wording? <laughs> we don't need to know the wording. We know what it will mean. It will mean what the words say. An oath is made of words. It may be possible to take it or avoid it. Have we a copy of the bill? There's one coming out from the city. Then let's get home and look at it. But, sir... Now listen, Will, and Meg, you listen too. God made the angels to show him splendor, as he made the animals for innocence and plants for their simplicity. But man he made to serve him wittily in the tangle of his mind. If he suffers us to fall to such a case that there is no escaping, then we may stand to our tackle as best we can. But, sir... And yes, Will, then we may clamor like champions if we have the spittle for it. And no doubt it delights God to see splendor where he only looked for complexity. But it's God's part, not our own, to bring ourselves to that extremity. Our natural business lies in escaping. So let's get home and study this bill. Now, look, I don't suppose anyone enjoyed putting him in prison any more than he enjoys being there. Well, not much more. Jailer. It's a job. The pay scale being what it is, they have to take a rather common top of man into the prison service. But it's a job like any other job. A bit nearer the knuckle than most, perhaps. What, again? Sorry, sir. Oh, what time is it? Just struck one, sir. This is iniquitous. Sir. All right. Who's there? The secretary, the Duke of Norfolk, and Archbishop Cranmer. I'm flattered. Lead me to them. Sir Thomas, you have seen this document before? Many times. It is the act of succession. These are the names of those who have sworn to it. I have, as you say, seen it before. Will you swear to it? No. Thomas, we must know plainly whether you recognize the offspring of Queen Anne as heirs to his majesty. The king in Parliament tells me that they are. Of course I recognize them. Will you swear that you do? Yes. Then why won't you swear to the act? Because there is more than that in the act. Is that it? Yes. Then we must find out what it is in the act that he objects to. Brilliant. Your Grace... May I try? Certainly, Archbishop. I have no pretensions to be an expert in police work. <coughs> Sir Thomas, it states in the preamble that the king's former marriage to the Lady Catherine was unlawful, she being previously his brother's wife, and the uh, Pope having no authority to sanction it. Is uh, that what you deny? Is that what you dispute? Is that what you are not sure of? Thomas, you insult the king and his council in the person of the Lord Archbishop. I insult no one. I will not take the oath. I will not tell you why I will not. Then your reason must be treasonable. Not must be. Maybe. It's a fair assumption. The law requires more than an assumption. The law requires a fact. Is it material why you won't swear? It's most material. For refusing to swear, my goods are forfeit and I am condemned to life imprisonment. You cannot lawfully harm me further. But if you were right in supposing I had reasons for refusing, and right again in supposing my reasons to be treasonable, the law would let you cut my head off. Oh, yes. Oh, well done, Sir Thomas. I've been trying to make that clear to his grace for some time. Oh, confound all this. I'm not a scholar, as Master Cromwell never tires of pointing out. And frankly, I don't know whether the marriage was lawful or not, but... Damn it, Thomas, look at those names. You know those men. Can't you do what I did and come with us for fellowship? And when we stand before God, 
and you were sent to paradise for doing according to your conscience, and I am damned for not doing according to mine. Will you come with me for fellowship? So those of us whose names are there are damned, Sir Thomas? I don't know, Your Grace. I have no window to look into another man's conscience. Uh, Sir Thomas, you don't seem to appreciate the seriousness of your position. I defy anyone to live in that cell for a year and not appreciate the seriousness of his position. Uh, yet the state has harsher punishment. You threaten like a dockside bully. How should I threaten? Like a minister of state with justice. Oh, justice is what you're threatened with. Then I'm not threatened. Master Secretary, I think the prisoner may retire. Unless you, my lord... No, 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 I see no purpose in prolonging the interview. Then, good night, Thomas. <sighs> Might I have one or two more books? You have books? Yes. I didn't know. You shouldn't have. May I see my family? No. Jailer? Sir? Have you ever heard the prisoner speak of the king's divorce or the king's supremacy of the church or the king's marriage? No, sir. Not a word. If he does, you will, of course, report it to the lieutenant. Of course, sir. You will swear an oath to that effect? Certainly, sir. Archbishop? Uh, <coughs> place your left hand on this and raise your right hand. Uh, take your hat off. <laughs> now, say after me. I swear by my mortal soul. I swear by my mortal soul. That I will report truly anything said by Sir Thomas More. That I will report truly anything said by Sir Thomas More. Against the king, the council, or the state of the realm. Against the king, the council, or the state of the realm. So help me God. Amen. Amen. And there's 50 guineas in it if you do. Yes, sir. Uh, That's not to tempt you into perjury, my man. No, sir. 50 guineas isn't tempting. 50 guineas is alarming. If he left it at swearing... But fifty, that's serious money. If it's worth that much now, it's worth my neck presently. I want no part of it. They can sort it out between them. I feel my deafness coming on. Wake up, Sir Thomas. What? Your family's here. Sir Thomas. What? Sir Thomas. Mac! 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 You can visit me! Mac! Alice! Roper! For God's sake, they've not put you in here! No, uh, just a visit. A short one. Jane, Jane, let them in. Can you do that? Yes, sir. I'm allowed to. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, thank you. Father. Oh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Will. Tom. Husband, how do you do? As well as need be, Alice. Very happy now. It's an awful place. Oh, except it's keeping me from you, my dear. It's not so bad. Remarkably like any other place. Yes. Too near the river. We brought you some things. Hmm? Some cheese. Cheese. And custard. And custard. And these other things. A bottle of wine. Oh, is it good, son, Roper? I don't know, sir. Ah. Well? Sir, come out. Swear to the act. Take the oath and come out. Is this why they let you come? Yes. Meg's under oath to persuade you. That was silly, Meg. How did you come to do that? I wanted to. When a man takes an oath, Meg, he's holding his own self in his hands, like water. And if he opens his fingers, then he needn't hope to find himself again. Some men aren't capable of this, but I'd be loath to think your father one of them. So should I. Then... There's something else I've been thinking. Oh, Meg. In any state that was half good, you would be raised up high. Not here, for what you've done already. All right. It's not your fault the state's three quarters, perhaps. No. Then, if you elect to suffer for it, you elect yourself a hero. That is very neat. But look now. If we lived in a state where virtue was profitable, common sense would make us good and greed would make us saintly. And we'd live like animals or angels in the happy land that needs no heroes. But But since, in fact, we see that avarice, anger, envy, pride, sloth, lust and stupidity commonly profit far beyond humility, chastity, fortitude, justice and thought and have to choose to be human at all, why then perhaps we must stand fast a little, even at the risk of being heroes. But in reason... Haven't you done as much as God can reasonably want? Well, finally, it isn't a matter of reason. Finally, 
It's a matter of love. You're content, then, to be shut up here with mice and rats when you might be home with us? Content? If they'd open the smallest crack, I'd be through it. Two minutes to go, sir. Well, I thought you'd like to know. Two no. minutes. Till seven o'clock, sir. Sorry. No. Uh, two minutes. Now, listen. You must leave the country. All of you must leave the country. I leave you here. It makes no difference, Meg. They won't let you see me again. You must all go on the same day, but not on the same boat. Different boats from different ports. It's after the trial, then. There'll be no trial. They have no case. Do this for me, I beseech you. Yes. Alice? Alice, I commanded... Right. Alice, if you can tell me that you understand, I think I can make a good death if I have to. Your death's no good to me. Alice, you must tell me that you understand. I don't. I don't believe this had to happen. If you say that, Alice, I don't see how I'm to face it. It's the truth. You're an honest woman. Much good may it do me. I'll tell you what I'm afraid of. That when you're gone, I shall hate you for it. Well, you mustn't, Alice. That's all. You mustn't. You... As for understanding, I understand you're the best man I've ever met or I'm likely to. And if you go, well, God knows what I suppose. I was God to my witness. God's kept deadly quiet about it. And if anyone wants my opinion of the king and his council, they've only to ask for it. Sorry, sir. Time's out. I'll take it. Time's out. Never know. You must no. understand my position. One minute. Now, Miss, don't bother. 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 Goodbye. You're doing your answer no good. You understand my position, sir. There's nothing I can do. I'm a plain and simple man and just want to keep out of trouble. Oh, sweet Jesus! These plain, simple men! Sir Thomas More, you were called before us here at the Hall of Westminster to answer charge of high treason. Nevertheless, and though you have heinously offended the King's Majesty, we hope, if you will even now forthink and repent of your obstinate opinions, you may still taste his gracious pardon. My Lord, I thank you. Howbeit, I make my petition to Almighty God that he will keep me in this, my honest mind, to the last hour that I shall live. As for the matters you may charge me with, I fear from my present weakness that neither my wit nor my memory will serve to make sufficient answers. I should be glad to sit down. Be seated. <laughs> Master Secretary Cromwell, have you the charge? I have, my lord. Then read the charge. It is the same charge, Sir Thomas, that was brought against Bishop Fisher. The late Bishop Fisher, I should have said. Late? Bishop Fisher was executed this morning. Master ah. Secretary, read the charge. That you did conspire, traitorously and maliciously, to deny and deprive our liege Lord Henry of his undoubted certain title, Supreme Head of the Church in England. I have never denied this title. You refuse the oath tendered you at the time. Silence of is not denial. And for my silence I am punished with imprisonment. Why have I been called again? On a charge of high treason, Sir Thomas. For which the punishment is not imprisoned. Death comes for all of us, my lords. Yes, even for kings he comes. To whom amidst all their royalty and brute strength he will neither kneel nor make them any reverence nor pleasantly desire them to come forth but roughly grasp them by the very breast and rattle them until they be stark dead, so causing their bodies to be buried in a pit and sending them to a judgment, whereof at their death their success is uncertain. Treason enough here. 
The death of King is not in question, Sir Thomas. Nor mine, I trust, until I'm proven guilty. Your life lies in your own hands, Thomas, as it always has. For our own deaths, my lord, yours and mine, dare we for shame desire to enter the kingdom with ease when our lord himself entered with so much pain? Now, Sir Thomas, you stand upon your silence. I do. A silence betokening the most eloquent of denial. Qui tacit consentiri. The maxim of the law is, silence gives consent. If, therefore, you wish to construe what my silence betokened, you must construe that I consented, not that I denied. Is that what the world, in fact, construes from it? Do you pretend that is what you wish the world to construe from it? The world must construe according to its wits. This court must construe according to the law. I put it to the court that the prisoner is perverting the law, making smoky what should be a clear light to discover to the court his own wrongdoing. The law is not a light for you or any man to see by. The law is not an instrument of any kind. The law is a causeway upon which, so long as he keeps to it, a citizen may walk safely. In matters of conscience. The conscience! The conscience! The word is not familiar oh, to you. My God, too familiar! I am very used to hear it in the mouths of criminals. I am used to hear bad men misuse the word of God, yet God exists. In matters of conscience, the loyal subject is more bounden to be loyal to his conscience than to any other thing. And so provide a noble motive for his frivolous self-conceit. Uh, my lord, I wish to call Sir Richard Rich. Sir Richard? I do solemnly swear... I do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before the court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, so help me God, Sir Richard. So help me God. Take your stand there, Sir Richard. Now, Rich, on 12th of March, you were at the tower. I was. With what purpose? I was sent to carry away the prisoner's books. Did you talk with the prisoner? Yes, did you talk about the king's supremacy of the church? Yes. What did you say? I said to him, supposing there was an act of parliament to say that I, Richard Rich, were to be king, would not you, Master Moore, take me for king? That I would, he said, for then you would be king. Yeah. Then he said... The prisoner? Yeah, yes, my lord. But I will put you a higher case, he said. How if there were an act of Parliament to say that God should not be God? This is true. And then you Silence. said... Silence. Continue. I said, ah, but I will put you a middle case. Parliament has made our king head of the church. Why will you not accept him? Well? Then he said... Parliament had no power to do it. No. Repeat no. the prisoner's no. words. He, he said, Parliament has not the competence. All words to that effect. He denied the title. He did. In good faith, Rich, I'm sorrier for your perjury than for my peril. Do you deny this? Yes. My lord. If I were a man who heeded not the taking of an oath, you know well I need not to be here. Now I will take an oath. If what Master Rich has said is true, then I pray I may never see God in the face, which I would not say were it otherwise for anything on earth. That is not evident. Is it probable? Is it probable that after so long a silence on this, the very point so urgently sought of me, I should open my mind to such a man as that? Sir Richard, have you anything to add? Uh, nothing, Mr. Secretary. Sir Thomas? To what purpose? I am a dead man. You have your desire of me. What you have hunted me for is not my actions, but the thoughts of my heart. It is a long road you have opened. For first men will disclaim their hearts, and presently they will have no heart. God help the people whose statesmen walk your road. Then the witness may withdraw. I have one question to ask the witness. 
That's a chain of office you are wearing. May I see it? The Red Dragon. What's this? Sir Richard is appointed Attorney General for Wales. For Wales? Why, Richard, it profits a man nothing to give his soul for the whole world. But for Wales... And now I must ask the court's indulgence. I have a message for the prisoner from the king. Sir Thomas, I am empowered to tell you that even now... No, I... no, it cannot be. The case rests, oh, my lord. The jury will retire and consider the evidence. But considering the evidence, it shouldn't be necessary for them to retire. Is it necessary? No, my lord. Then, is the prisoner guilty or not guilty? Guilty, my lord. Prisoner at the bar, you have been found guilty of high treason. The sentence of the court... My lord. My lord, when I was practicing the law, the manner was to ask the prisoner before pronouncing sentence if he had anything to say. Have, have you anything to say? Yes. To avoid this, I've taken every path my winding wits would find. Now that the court has determined to condemn me, God knoweth how, I will discharge my mind concerning my indictment and the king's title. The indictment is grounded in an act of Parliament which is directly repugnant to the law of God. The King in Parliament cannot bestow the supremacy of the Church because it is a spiritual supremacy. And more to this, the immunity of the Church is promised both in Magna Carta and the King's own coronation oath. Now we plainly see that you are militia. Not so, Mr. Secretary. I am the King's true subject and pray for him and all the realm. I do none harm. I say none harm. I think none harm. And if this be not enough to keep a man alive in good faith, I long not to live. I have, since I came into prison, been several times in such a case that I thought to die within the hour. And I thank our Lord I was never sorry for it but rather sorry when it passed. And therefore, my poor body is at the king's pleasure. Would God my death might do him some good. Nevertheless, it is not for the supremacy that you have sought my blood, but because I would not bend to the marriage. Prisoner of the bar. You have been found guilty on the charge of high treason. The sentence of the court is that you shall be taken from this court to the tower, sent to the place of execution, and there your head shall be stricken from your body, and may God have mercy on your soul. I can come no further, Thomas. Here, drink this. Howard, my master had evil and gall, not wine, given him to drink. Let me be going. Father! Father! Mother, father! Mother, father! Have patience. <laughs> Trouble not thyself. Death comes for us all, even as our birth, even as our birth, death does but stand aside a little. It is the law of nature and the will of God. You have long known the secrets of my heart. <laughs> Sir Thomas, Archbishop, friend, be not afraid of your office. You send me to God. You are very sure of that, Sir Thomas. He will not refuse one who is so blithe to go to him. Thomas Cromwell was found guilty of high treason and executed on the 28th of July, 1540. Norfolk was found guilty of high treason and should have been executed on the 27th of January, 1547. But on the night of the 26th of January, the king died of syphilis. 
<laughs> wasn't able to sign the warrant. Thomas Cranmer, that's the Archbishop, was burned alive on the 21st of March, 1556. Oh, uh, Richard Rich became a knight and solicitor general, a baron and lord chancellor, and died in his bed. So did I. And so I hope will all of you.